USA Ultimate is proud to present the 2014 USA Ultimate College National Championship. And this is the second women's semifinal between the Central Florida Sirens and the Oregon Fugue live from Mason High School Stadium in Mason, Ohio. A look at the women's championship bracket as Ohio State's already moved on. They beat Washington 15-9 earlier today. Tomorrow, the Fever will play either Central Florida or Oregon for the national championship. Alongside the voice of Ultimate, Evan Leffler, I'm Wayne Randazzo. And Evan, a great first game today. And now these two teams battle for the right to move on in that final game. This will be their second meeting of the year. These teams are so close. The one previous meeting at the Stanford Invite, a universe point Callahan was the deciding factor. Oregon coming out on top. And, you know, five years ago, Central Florida wasn't even a program. They're five years old. Meanwhile, Oregon looking for its third championship in the last five years. But regardless of what the past has brought us, both teams absolutely deserving of being here today. The Sirens, despite their youngness, they are quickly progressing as they move forward here, winning 22 of their last 23 games. And they're a team that relies on just a couple players, mostly their Callahan nominee, Sonny Harris. She is perhaps the MVP in Women's Ultimate because they rely on her so much. You can see the disc goes through her hands more than anybody else. She's a very aggressive competitor and really the breakout star in Women's Ultimate over the last 18 months. And for Oregon, the defending champion on the women's side, Sophie Darch, their top player, and they've gotten hot lately. Well, Oregon has an army of talent, but Sophie Darch is the trigger that lights the ignition for their blast off. I mean, she is the key off turnovers, sending it deep. They love transition offense. They love to attack in a hurry. They love to put the pressure on their opponent. That's what made them the champs last year. They're hoping they can get back to the finals again. Ohio State has already advanced. Now they wait for their opponent in the women's championship tomorrow. Oregon playing Central Florida on a beautiful day here in Mason. The second women's semifinal is coming up next. The USA Ultimate College Championships are presented by the Discraft Ultra Star, official disc of USA Ultimate. Ask your retailer for Discraft Ultra Star. The Triple Crown Tour, America's most competitive and prestigious series of Ultimate Tournaments. The US Open Ultimate Championships and Convention, a gathering of the international Ultimate community, celebrant character, community, and competition this July 4th weekend in the Twin Cities. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. To learn more about Ultimate or find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. Take a look at Central Florida starting lineup. Amy Price, Kayla St. Pierre, and Shayna Brock, along with Mariel Hammond. The Cutters, Godding, Williams, and we mentioned Sonny Harris in the open. They're the handlers for Joe Tilly's club as Central Florida tries to move to the championship game, trying to knock off the defending champs from Oregon. Schaffner, Hurd, Bartriff, and Bovey, the cutters there. Alex Odie along with Ashley Young, flanking Sophie Darch, the Callahan nominee for Lou Burris's squad. It's really been a meteoric rise, Wayne, for Central Florida, making nationals for the first time last year. They finished 17th. It was you know, sort of the ultimate happy to be at nationals experience. The goal this year was to win the national championship. Back in the fall, that's what they discussed in that context, and here they are, 30 points away from the first ever championship in just the fifth year of the program. The pull from Central Florida to start it off, and it's Oregon in their trademark yellow. As the Fugue try to get on the board early. And if you look directly at the Oregon jersey for too long, you might start having some sight issues. So sunglasses are encouraged. A crossfield pass from Lily Hurd. She gets it back. There's no question Oregon has more depth. And Lou Burris knows that. Darch throws it up into the wind. It's gotten windy again between games. Oregon patiently waiting for the first strike. The flick to Darch, and looks like we're gonna have a stoppage here. The observers jump in, looks like a quick foul, and Darch will flip it again, looking for the goal line, and she finds it as Darch connects with Jesse Schaffner to put Oregon on the board. Fugue has so many targets, but I think 
Jesse Schaffner is Sophie Darch's favorite. I mean, the number of times we've seen Darch to Schaffner this weekend, like clockwork, they have such good chemistry together. And Jesse Schaffner, just five foot one, but she's incredibly quick. She has great hands, she's got great skills. You know, Oregon's become a factory of ultimate talent. And you know, Schaffner's gonna be the leader of this team next year. She's just a junior. They've got a lot of talented freshmen. It was Haley Walrus, perhaps the freshman of the year in women's college ultimate, that had that Callahan and the win over UCF at the Stanford Invite. But there's Schaffner. Played a lot of youth ultimate. You know, success really breeds success. Was chatting with Sophie Darch earlier this week about why she chose to go to Oregon. And she was playing on some of the national teams, U19, and there were girls from Oregon on that team. And she liked them, they got along well, and they're like, well, come check out Oregon. And they went out there, and her family loved the school, and she likes bright colors, so she doesn't mind wearing the, the gear. Walrus with the pull. Now Central Florida will have their first possession of the game. The Sirens. Their jerseys are pretty colorful too. Yes, they are. That's Sonny Harris who zings it forward to Mariel Hammond. Hammond and Harris are gonna have to carry UCF. And they certainly are capable of doing so. Bit of an overthrow there. It was not the intended target who laid out for it. And now Oregon with a chance to go up too early. Well, UCF has done the first thing right. After the turn, play pretty good transition defense. Transition O is the staple to Oregon's success. Lou Burris loves to get it and attack, attack, attack. A chance to attack here with an early lead. The observers getting involved again. Now Walrus will put it back in play. She flicks it deep. Good defense by Central Florida to knock that one away. It's Kayla St. Pierre who gets a hand on the disc, knocking it away from Andrea Fontenot. And she knows how important that D was. And now Central Florida from the goal line. Sonny Harris starts the possession to Aaron Godding. A little bit of a low toss, but Harris able to grab it. And now working the middle of the field, Central Florida pushes forward. Harris has 25 assists entering today's play, 32 in the tournament overall. That's the most in the tournament. She also has more than 30 turnovers on defense. The cup on defense there, now it breaks off. And Harris swings one out of bounds, so Oregon will get it back. Well, Harris, you know, like Darch, is a bit of a gunslinger. And I'd be surprised if more than two, three throws go by without the disc landing in Sonny Harris's hands. They're gonna win with her, they're gonna lose with her. It's basically up to her. Oregon scored on their first try. The defense of Central Florida trying to stay close to the Oregon handler, but they've broken through that push and a toss that got some air underneath it at the last moment. Skidding out of bounds. Guess who's picking up the disc for UCF? And she actually went to Central Florida to play on the varsity golf team. A really accomplished golfer. Did both for a year and then decided that Frisbee was more fun. Quick try for the end zone, what a catch! <laughs> it's early in the game. But this could be the catalyst that sends Oregon to the finals. Look at this. Full extension. Haley Walrus, the freshman. S -I -R -E -N -S, 
They don't make too many freshmen like that. A great start for Oregon. The freshman Haley Wolrus on the full extension dive. Walrus has been active early for the fugue and Oregon trying to get back to the championship for the third straight year. They were the runners up in 2012, the champion last year. And Ohio State waiting the winner of this game tomorrow afternoon. One of the, one of the reasons I think Ultimate has such great spirit is because everybody appreciates that type of an effort from Walrus. You know, as a UCF player, you're bummed to be down 2-0, but you appreciate the sheer selflessness and athleticism of giving up your body and making a full extension grab like that. Darch pulls it in, now Central Florida down two early. Swinging that one into no man's land, a diving attempt by St. Pierre, but couldn't grab it. Now Oregon works quickly, Dalrus. Back to Darch. Swing it out toward the sideline. Oregon setting up near the goal line. Darch again. She's cupped. She gets rid of it. And zings it past everyone. Sunny Harris, the closest to it. And she'll bring it up for Central Florida. The Oregon turnover, uh, the Oregon handler is not immune from turnovers. They take their shots and sometimes a little too over aggressive. But Darch will make more than she misses. Almost trouble there for the Sirens, but they convert and keep the possession alive. That's Harris, the all-world player for Central Florida. She does everything. Now the huck comes from Hammond. And it's pulled down by St. Pierre. Sirens with their best chance to score. They love that short dump back to Harris. Let her make the call. Little handler cut resets the stall count. And connection for Central Florida. Kayla St. Pierre gets the first goal. There's Marielle Hammond. Joseph Tilly, the head coach, says that she does so much both on and off the field in terms of leadership and organization. Harris with the first assist. Nice layout bid, but the throw right on the money. Central Florida cuts the Oregon lead in half. As we take a look at what a huck is, a long throw from one side of the field to the opponent's end. It Creates good field position, certainly, and when it connects, it's a very strong offensive play. And a weapon both of these teams love to use. The men's semifinals coming up later, it seems like they huck it about 70% of the time. Well, you mentioned it. Both these teams trying to earn the right to face Ohio State tomorrow. Ohio State Fever has now won 40 games in a row, including a win over Oregon in fairly convincing fashion at the Northwest Challenge in Seattle. Ohio State's last loss and only two losses on the season came against Central Florida back in January. That was at the Florida Winter Classic, but Oregon trying to open up a big lead. And another goal for the Fugue. Adrian Bovey with the reception. A.D. Bovey has had an amazing tournament. She made perhaps the play of the tourney in the women's division in Oregon's game against Stanford. Just a remarkable layout. And you know, once Alex Ode was able to secure that disc, she did just an easy flick put to space. Bovey, a tremendous athlete. Never afraid to give up the body, although this time it was much easier than some of the plays she's had to make. A calculated risk by the UCF defense. Got the near D, didn't happen. That's basically making a layup on an open fast break. You see Oregon using their 
connections downfield, and Lou Burris certainly knows a lot about team concepts. Well, you know, as a defense first team, it's kind of hard to single out any one individual. Um, I certainly think everybody, the, the person that everybody talks about when they talk about our team would be our Callahan nominee, Sophie Darch. But as a team, we're just, it's defense. It's like team. It's everybody coming together. Lou Burris looking festive for the occasion. He's got the bow tie on down on the field. Yeah, he's looking wacky. The girls like it that way. This past week, he went to the tattoo parlor and got the Oregon Fugue curved F tattooed on his left forearm. And right next to the elaborate F, there are seven dots, one for each of the seven years that he's coached Oregon's women's team. Looking for their third national title. Sonny Harris setting up the offense for Central Florida. Seems like it's every other pass that she touches. Flicks it ahead, and then somehow they give it right back to her. Now Harris looking for the goal line and finds another score. This time it's Shayna Brock for the UCF point. Once again, it's Harris picking up the assist. She's a really hard handler to guard because of her size. You know, she's a tough handler to contain in the backfield, and she's got excellent vision downfield. Good timing on the cut, breaking away from the stack by Shayna Brock, just a sophomore on this team. Brock from Marietta, Georgia. As you hear the call of the sirens, and UCF down by just one. For Central Florida, a team that has somehow gotten here very quickly. Their first year, 2009. And it was a strenuous year, a year that almost broke the program. Yeah, Aaron Godding, now one of the captains, said, we were basically a sloppy mess in our first year or two, but kept on improving exponentially. They had a goal of going to Nationals in year three. That did not come to fruition, but they persevered, got to Nationals last year, among the top 20 teams in the country, and now Harris intercepts a chance to tie it up. And she does! To Mariel Hammond after the interception, Central Florida makes it 3-3. This is gonna be a wake-up call for Oregon. It looks like Sonny Harris was the intended target there from Sophie Darch. And a beautiful put right on the money to Marielle Hammond. That's the connection that might carry Central Florida to the finals. One interesting thing to note, Wayne, you know, Oregon, the only school in the country that has a team in both the women's and the men's finals, the Oregon men play in the first uh, semifinal, I should say. Oregon men play Colorado in a couple hours, but I don't believe they are here. I think they're getting ready, doing a film session perhaps, hydrating, resting, having a pregame meal. The UCF men aren't happy to be here. They wish they were still playing, but they were eliminated yesterday in, in a Universe Point Classic in pre-quarters against Texas. So the UCF men's team and all the UCF fans are really creating a, a UCF-centric atmosphere. A Hawk looking for a quick score. And Oregon connects again. Sophie Darch grabs it in the end zone. And Oregon right back on top. Well, you more often see Darch on the distributing end. But here, Alex Ode lets it fly. A lot of air under that flick, Huck. And Sophie Darch with a good reach. She's been playing ultimate since recess of sixth grade at the Paideia School in Atlanta, one of the great ultimate factories for talent across the country. Played in a mixed club team when she was 12, 13 years old, also played basketball, also played soccer, but as she got more into her high school years, chose ultimate over soccer, won a championship medal last year, although she told me that her mother stole her medal, so she wants to get one that she can keep for herself.
It might be nice for Sophie to keep her own medals. Played for the Junior Worlds team along with a number of her teammates. Last year's Oregon Callahan nominee, Bailey Zahnizer, is here. She's graduated working in education. Look at Lou Burris with the bow tie on as he trots off the field. He is one eccentric fellow, but he is a, a fantastic thinker. He writes a, a great column that I consider a must read on, on Sky Magazine's website called Winning the Fields. You know, I'm not sure there are too many people in all of the country or the world who have put as much time thinking about Ultimate and really dissecting it, studying video. And he was a great player in the heyday of Sockeye, a real ferocious defender, and Oregon's really lucky to have him. Did she keep that inbounds? It appears there is a foul going to be called anyway, so Hammond with a great effort on the sideline, but they will toss it back. It's an uncontested foul. Did she stay in bounds? Watching live, I thought she did. It's her first point of contact after she has possession. No, good call. She was out, but UCF keeps the disc anyway. Instant replay is nice. <laughs> Sirens trying to even it. Stephanie Williams doing a lot of the handling on this possession. And now Mariel Hammond. Oregon sticking with a zone defense here. Sometimes you can find a hole in that zone though, Evan. Oregon has a different zone than anybody else in the country. One of the things they pride themselves on. You know how some basketball coaches like to run the amoeba? Sort of a compilation of different zone defenses with some man principles mixed in. That's basically the Oregon zone. But as they get closer to the end zone, they tend to switch back to man. Williams tosses it back, and now Central Florida primed for a score. It's Hammond at the goal line. Wide open, and Central Florida ties it. UCF with a textbook interpretation of how to beat Oregon zone defense. It confounds teams when they rush, but UCF exhibiting patience and precision. Surveying the field. You know someone's going to be open. Oregon's trying to fill in the gaps, but Harris and Hammond doing the distributing. And not the first time that Kayla St. Pierre has been in the end zone. Won't be the last either. On their way to this part of the tournament, UCF went three and one in pool play, still able to win pool C. The win over Michigan in the quarterfinal round, an easy one, 15-7. They led 13-4 at one point in that one. They beat Carlton, Colorado, and British Columbia. They had a hiccup against Northeastern. A 15-13 loss against Northeastern. What happened there? Well, they had the pool one, so they, they knew they were the number one seed. They knew they had a buy into the quarters, regardless of how that game turned out. So they certainly expanded the lines a little bit, allowed some different players to get more run out on the field. So uh, that, that loss didn't raise a red flag for me at all, to be honest. The pull from Harris, instead of the backhand toss, she flicked it forward about 60 yards. And now a huck for Darch, making the one-handed catch. A quick setup from Oregon, trying to score. Good defense there, Central Florida stuck they're the person-to-person -person defense. And as Rotriff was the intended target, a great effort on the D from UCF's Jody Deering. Now Central Florida could take the lead for the first time, but a drop deep in their own territory right at the goal line. Unforced turnover there. Amy Price comes up empty. And now stoppage in play. It's a pick. Unlike basketball, you can't set screens. So if a defender is picked by another player, they're allowed to call it and catch up, making up the distance that they would have had if not for the screen. Oregon on the hammer toss for the score. 
Sophie Darch to Jesse Schaffner, and Oregon grabs the lead back. Second time we've seen Darch to Schaffner for the score. You know, when you develop these precise throws over the top, when there's not much wind, that's why ultimate's an offensive favored game. There's just not much you can do about that as a defense. Hammer throw over the top, uses the same grip as the flick. It takes some time to perfect. It's all about the rotation and the angle with which you release the disc, but it's really fun to throw. I was probably known to throw a few too many hammers in my day. Explain the concept there on the offense from Oregon. They had the vertical stack in the end zone. Only Schaffner moved out of them. Well, they were basically isolating Schaffner. I mean, that's who they trust with her hands to make the play. They trust Darge to give her a chance to make the play. And there are other options built off that stack set, cutting to the front cone and the back cone, but the play that time was to get it to Schaffner. How do you get your collar like that? Let's go, Fuchs! I have no answer, so I just stay <laughs> silent. I think you should learn that from Lou, and maybe you'll have that for the women's final tomorrow. Yeah? I don't want to show bias, though, with a green bow tie. We like the Don Cherry of Ultimate. I don't think I've ever worn a bow tie in my <laughs> life. Maybe when I was, like, five years old going to my uncle's wedding. I think that's the last time. The flick up the sideline, caught by Sonny Harris. And now UCF at the goal line. And Harris gets it in, feeding Mariel Hammond. Back and forth we go, and tied again. Well, this game is developing a pretty nice rhythm right now. And it's because UCF has had the answers. That's Darch versus Harris. And just a nice little calm completion. You know, what we've seen from Darch and Harris so far, what makes both of them dangerous is the versatility. I think they're both known more for their throws and their precision, but, you know, back-to-back -back points, we saw Darch as a deep threat. And then Harris down the sideline, hauls it in. No surprise that Harris has three of the five assists so far for the Sirens. They've drawn even with the Fugue as the top four seeds in the women's bracket all advance to the semifinals. Number one, Ohio State advanced earlier over Washington, 15 to nine. And now two versus three in this battle as Harris sends it downfield on the pull. Sophie Darch with the easy toss ahead. And now going deep for the point. Bovey makes the catch. I've been really impressed with Adrienne Bovey watching Oregon this weekend. She plays this game with this effortlessness. You know, it doesn't even look like she's running that hard. She reads the disc perfectly, boxes out perfectly. A principle that isn't allowed in ultimate picks, but you are allowed to box out, which is the lost art of the NBA these days. But Bovey hauls in the Schaffner backhand huck. Second goal of the day for Bovey. And there's still some veterans on this Oregon team like Bovey and Darch, but for, for the most part, this is a much younger team than the one that prevailed in the national title game over Carlton Syzygy last year. You know, a lot of freshman contributors, others stepping up. Bailey Zahnizer here, but no longer eligible after she played her Ultimate Bailey career for Fugue, Kimber Coles, Morgan Zajon, Anna Almy, Munson, Karpelowitz, some other names. Was that a, that was nearly a drop pull, or was it? Well, Harris 
fielded the pull and then wow. tossed it forward and it hit the turf before it could be grabbed by Williams. A very innocent throw and Oregon trying to capitalize, they can't. Big break for Central Florida after a mistake. The feud make one of their own. What a crazy sequence. Four-man cup here from Oregon. Now a two-person cup. Here the stall count. They have up until 10 to flip the disc. Took Central Florida about nine throws to go those 20 yards. Oregon playing tight defense. The cup, a wall of defenders that surround the thrower. And Central Florida trying to break through that press. And so far they have, trying to tie it again. Too high. Intended for St. Pierre, really mistimed her lead. Central Florida responds with a zone, all sorts of different zone defenses. Harris, the deep, deep in the zone, she cleans that up easily. Another interception for Harris, she's had a couple of those. Now Hammond trying to slow it down. A series of turnovers here. Hammond looking to tie. Harris can't get it. Seems like both teams have gotten a little frantic here. First to eight, sends it to halftime, and Sonny Harris unable to reach on that long toss from Hammond. Now up ahead, Oregon on a deflection. That was a deep shot that looked like it was going to be deed by Harris. The wind popped the disc up past the Oregon player, and then Harris knocked it down. We mentioned the nerves of national television, a semifinal matchup. Seems like do too much. And the wind has picked up a little bit, swirling in the stadium. You very rarely play in a stadium, and that creates all different sorts of wind tunnels. Stoppage. Stoppage back shy of midfield. And now a foul that seems to be contested here. In this area, the two players in a self-officiating mode trying to figure out what actually happened. So the observer rules in this case. The observers are in orange. Laura Meyer, the head observer, along with Dan Larilla, Brad Tinney, and Sam Wood. In the playoffs, in this scenario with the tournament the style play, here. are the observers Coming playing more of a role you. than usual? I think it, it nationals when the stakes are at the highest. It's natural it's for there to be the throw from her to here. a little bit more There's dissension. One between you, right? I don't think there are. It was here. It was me, but I okay, all right, then it's here. Here. Sometimes we spend a lot right of time here? worrying about here? a three-yard difference. Oregon defenders waiting to converge on Godding. What's the setup here with the two defenders in between the handler? Well, that's where they were when she caught the play, caught the disc. So let's go back to where you were when the violation occurred, and now they'll try to catch up and reset the defense. This is... You know, sort of a trademark Oregon junk D. Harris was hand blocked. She caught a foul. Ball, ball. That's an interesting situation with Hammond about to flick it and then Galvin right there. They agree that Galvin was at fault. You see the politeness, the sportsmanship, and they call it in ultimate the spirit of the game. Absolutely. The entire foundation of the sport. Lou Burris told me before the game, they'd try out some of their junk EDs and see how it goes. I think for the most part, Oregon's confident that it's man defense. Another foul on the mark. Oh, Angela Toki just got issued a blue card, which is a TMF, a team misconduct foul. Basically a caution. You get two of those, nothing happens. A third, and it's a yardage penalty. That could be a real difference 
uh, making factor in the game. Again, you saw the very innocent discussion as Central Florida starts to push. And that's new this year, the card system. Never had a referee carrying around the blue card, the yellow card, or the red card, but we do now. Between two defenders, Sunny Harris ends up with it. She was not in, though, and now Central Florida does get the point. As Harris was in the end zone, but the disc was not, Amy Price gets the goal. Central Florida again, calm offense near the end zone. Looked like Harris was in on the first one, but the observers said no. One more quick flip. She gets the assist instead of the goal. We oh. mentioned the spirit of the game, Evan, and, and here's some of what that means. Spirit of sportsmanship, placing the responsibility for fair play on the player. Highly competitive play is encouraged, but never at the expense of the mutual respect among competitors. It's not win at all costs. It's win while still respecting your opponent and playing the game the right way. And in the media guide for the tournament, it talks about 10 things you should know about the spirit of the game. And number one, the golden rule, treat others as you would want to be treated. Do the right thing, make a good impression. No eye for an eye here in Ultimate. It's a very friendly sport at the end of the day. But that's not to mean it doesn't have great intensity and an incredible atmosphere of competition. It's like a traveling violation against Oregon being called. And now it's being waved off by the head observer. The quick push ahead, a great effort by Schaffner, but that one just out of her reach. As you saw, too few teammates there just pass it back and forth as they ran upfield. It's a little too far, great bid from Schaffner. Oh my. Hopefully Sonny Harris is all right. Looks like she's okay. She's hucking it now. And again, it's good defense, Sophie Darch, who knocks the disc away. First to eight, sends this game to halftime. And there's actually a foul called here. Back in the throw, goes to the observer, and a foul is ruled, so it will be Harris's disc. UCF keeps it. Now you can erase that last play from the stat sheet, but, and I've been really impressed by Sophie Darch's versatility and all around game here in the semis. Was this a foul? Looks like she got her on the shoulder. There's very little contact allowed in this sport. As you see Central Florida with possession here, they have not led in this one. It's been tied quite a few times. But at no point has UCF been in the lead. They can take it here. Second semifinal of the day, Ohio State won earlier. They beat Washington 15 to nine. Winner goes on to play the Fever in the championship tomorrow. That one tipped. And Oregon gets it back. Alex Oney with that deep review. Now Lily Hurd shoots it ahead, intercepted. Mariel Hammond picks it off. Very intelligent poach by Hammond. She read the play perfectly. Hammond trying to avoid Schaffner as she gets rid of it. Zings it back Hammond's way. The running catch. Central Florida leads for the first time. Well, this is the Mary L. Hammond point. Her fellow captain, Aaron Godding, told me, if no one's getting open, you know that Marielle will be open. 
She's their bailout in desperation moments for continuation. Really nice over the top break throw and then just beating Jesse Schaffner up the line. Schaffner, five foot one, chasing the five foot four inch Marielle Hammond. Another thing that Godding said about Hammond, she skies many more people than she has the right to, considering how small she is. Really good in the air. Seems like that's absolutely true. It's hard to believe Hammond is only 5'4 when you watch her play. She plays much bigger. Harris does too. Harris is only 5'6. Sirens on top for the first time. The pull from Aaron Godding. As the disc lays flat there, Oregon picks it up. Sophie Darch, the Hawk. Bovey has it. And that's Sophie Darch's trademark. And Bovey fired up. A throw that she's been working on since she was 11, 12 years old. And Bovey. In between two defenders, reads it perfectly. Hey guys, if you're one of those wonderful people that was nominated for the men's Callahan Award, we need you to check This is basically a, a double game point to take it to halftime. So with limited timeouts in each half, not wanting to leave them on the table. This is basically the equivalent of the college basketball use it or lose it timeout that you'd see in the final minute of the first half. A very competitive first half. The crowd getting excited, something thrown in there. It's the Central Florida men, they were unbelievable in the semifinals last year. Look at there, a juice box looked like. <laughs> Chance to cool off. The Dogs of War. They basically played the perfect game of ultimate against a great Carlton team to advance to the finals. Many of the same guys back this year for them, but falling in the pre-quarters to Texas. Here's A.D. Bovey. Well, it's halftime point. Again, first team to eight sends the game to halftime. Lou Burris shouting out last second instructions before they kick him off the field. Perfectly starched collar and all. And now UCF floods the near side as they will try to work it downfield. A chance to go into halftime with the lead. Sonny Harris sends it to halftime. The point to Shayna Brock and UCF goes up 8-7 on Oregon. Pick your favorite quarterback on his way to a 500-yard passing day. That's the kind of rhythm that Sonny Harris is in right now. Perfect put to the end zone. Now we're on serve. It's a virtual tie because Oregon will get the disc to start the second half, but on serve at the half, and after UCF was down a break early, a nice way for the Sirens to get back in it, reestablish themselves, and basically declare that we are here as a semifinalist at Nationals, and we came to play. Central Florida with the advantage. Again, the winner of this game will play Ohio State. In the women's championship tomorrow, Ohio State knocking off Washington earlier, 15 to nine. And the Fever, six and zero in this tournament. Oregon with a win would be six and zero. And the Sirens, despite a loss in pool play against Northeastern, right there with them, as the defending champions go into halftime trailing by one. But as you mentioned, Evan, Oregon will start the second half with the disc. So 
a chance to tie it up right after the break as UCF carries an 8-7 lead over Oregon. We are ready to go just about with Oregon head coach Lou Burris. And coach, in this first half, your team going back and forth with Central Florida. What have you noticed about the Sirens that has made it tough on your team? Um, they've done a really nice job of converting the opportunities that they've gotten. Uh, I think we've been able to force more turns uh, when we're on D, but have not really been able to put them in. And they've just gotten a couple chances, and they banked the ones they got. It's been Sonny Harris shooting it deep. You talked about how they like to reset it to her with a quick dump. How, if any way, can you stop that? Uh, it's really about uh, the matchups that we put on her and them doing a good job of being disciplined to deny that cut, you know, that particular little break side shuffle cut she uses and not get sucked into any of the other fakes and stuff that she uses to set it up. Coach, how long does it take you to get that collar like that? It's perfect. <laughs> Years of practice. <laughs> Lou Burris, the Thanks, head coach Lou. of Oregon. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. His fugue down 8-7 to Central Florida in the second women's semifinal. Winner plays Ohio State in the national championship game. Central Florida leads Oregon 8-7 in the second women's semifinal. Winner will play Ohio State in the championship tomorrow. And for Oregon, a pretty good start to this one. They've really gone back and forth here, but the fugue in the first half, able to take the early lead. Sophie Darch, a big reason why. Yeah, Sophie Darch to Jesse Schaffner, a familiar combination. I made the mistake of saying that we were on serve. Oregon received in the first half, so UCF actually up a break. Sirens will get it to start in the second. Sensational layup from Haley Walrus. That was the play of the half from the freshman. Darch distributing and also receiving. Check out this shot deep from Schaffner to Bovey. Perfect box out amidst three blue jerseyed siren defenders. But UCF really persevered in this first half and it was Sonny Harris doing the majority of the work on offense to Kayla St. Pierre in the end zone. And then to Shayna Brock in the end zone. And then looking deep once again for St. Pierre. Hammond, Harris, Brock and St. Pierre, you can boil down the UCF effort to those four. And this has a tight game written all over it as we head down the stretch. Six assists from Sonny Harris in the first half as we bring in Joe Tilly, the head coach for Central Florida. And coach, you have to be impressed with your team so far. Sonny Harris once again leading the way. Yes, I'm very impressed um, following the game plan. Um, hopefully we make some adjustments that kind of help against the Huck in the second half. Joe, how often do you want Sunny to touch the disc? I mean, how long could go by before it's too long that she hasn't touched it? I feel confident in other players, so I don't want us to depend on that. But I definitely, the more she touches it, the better it is for our team. Coach, what about this second half now? Would you like to see from your team to hang on to this lead and advance to the final? I really want to limit or make Oregon work it up the field. They're beating us on some long hooks. You know, easy plays for them, and we're going to try to make some adjustments to have them touch the disc a lot more before they can score. All right, Coach, good luck. All right, thank you. Joe Tilly, the head coach of Central Florida. It's an 8-7 lead for the Sirens, the second women's semifinal, the second half coming up. Jimmy Mickle, the champion in the Callahan nominations today. He gets the trophy, Mickle Mania, running wild in Boulder. And not a huge surprise. He's been the face of men's ultimate this year. It sets up a great semifinal matchup, though. Last year's Callahan Award winner, Dylan Freechild, leading Oregon. Jimmy Mickle of Colorado Mama Bird. That game coming up at 5.30 on ESPN3. That should be a great one. Oregon will play Colorado in that first men's semifinal later. North Carolina, UNC Wilmington in the in-state matchup to wrap up the semifinal action tonight. Championship tomorrow as we come back with the second women's semifinal. Second half about to start. Central Florida leads Oregon 8-7. With their win earlier over Washington, the fever from Ohio State advancing to the final of the women's bracket. That's tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN3. 
And the winner of this game between Central Florida and Oregon will match up with Ohio State tomorrow here in Ohio at Mason High School, suburban Cincinnati. It is a beautiful day today. And for ultimate, you can't ask for any better weather than this. A little windy, but not too bad. It has been picture perfect all weekend long from Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. when the first horn sounded, the opening pull here at Nationals, a place that so many college ultimate players dream of attending. And if you get a chance to play in it, that is really special. A deflection there, but Sonny Harris able to handle it. UCF with the first possession of the second half. Trying to take a two goal advantage. And a great connection there to Brock. Over the top, Brock had her flip knocked away. Oregon holds it, Walrus with the defense. So Oregon looking for a break to get this back on serve. It was interesting, Wayne, during halftime, most of the Oregon players were resting up. Meanwhile, Sophie Darch was playing catch with her coach, Lou Burris, exploring the wind patterns of the stadium a little bit more. Ever changing since the start of the game. That's a nice put. Great D though by Harris. Sonny Harris holds the lead for Central Florida. And Fugue unable to score on their opening possession. Harris walks it up to the goal line. Up against Casey Harris, no relation. That one poached by Oregon. And a quick strike. Casey Harris spikes it after the game is now tied. At the half, you know Lou Burris talked about setting the tone to begin the second half. Casey Harris punctuates the point. Harris is senior. And just quick transition offense. That's what Oregon's about, forcing turnovers and then capitalizing quickly. Oregon, the Pool B champion, a 4-0 mark. They handled everyone they came across. Fugue beating Colorado College, Stanford, Western Washington, Tufts, and then Virginia in the quarterfinal trying to knock off the Sirens and advance back to the championship game. Oregon's been there the last two years. They won it last year. And Lou Burris, his team, even again with UCF. Virginia gave Oregon an amazing game this morning in the quarterfinals. Virginia led by club national champion Alika Johnston, member of Washington, D.C. scandal. And she just made some unbelievable plays to keep Virginia competitive with this Oregon squad. UCF on the huck attempt, and the diving try comes up just short for Mariel Hammond. Just getting a hand on that disc was remarkable. Oregon on the quick strike offense going deep. And Harris with the poach. Harris went up and ripped it away from Bartruff. Ariel Hammond, who came up just a little short on that last diving try. Kind of set up the UCF offense, dumps it to Stephanie Williams. Casey Harris trying to interrupt the pass, but Williams able to connect with Amy Price. They sing it ahead. Sonny Harris with the running catch, and UCF back on top. Plays the game with a cool swagger. You know, she expects to get this disc pretty nonchalant about the finish in the end zone. No problem. 
That's what you call a bookend. The D in one end zone and the score in the other for Sonny Harris. Harris and perhaps a couple other members of Sirens looking to play club. I, I understand they're trying out for the team in Austin, Texas showdown. That's headed to Worlds in Italy in August. I'm guessing that she has a pretty good chance of making the team. Sonny Harris with six assists in this game, 38 in the tournament, very active in the first half after the poach there, right back to the end zone. And she's gotten D's with her positioning. I mean, she has the athleticism too, but her field sense and patience and just overall awareness in addition to all of her spot on throws, what makes her so dangerous. Took a while for UCF to take the lead. It wasn't until it became a 7-6 game that the Sirens actually led for the first time. They've maintained that one goal advantage to this point. Long way to go, first to 15, the hammer throw from Darch. Now Lily Hurd flings it forward, knocked away. Hammond with the defensive stop. This game has been tied six different times, but UCF trying to extend the lead to two for the first time. Unable to, and now Oregon with a chance to get it right back. The sideline toss across midfield, and more good defense, although this time some contact, and Hammond is going to get pinched for the foul. Uncontested foul, it looks like. The spirit of the game, the sportsmanship that we talked about. Hammond's like, yeah, it was me. This game won. It's all about respecting your opponent. You play as hard as you can, and if you play outside the rules, you admit it. That's a very uncharacteristic drop from Jesse Schaffner. Trying to one-handed. And Oregon turns it over. The Sirens will use one of their two second-half timeouts here. Sonny Harris must be noticing maybe your team getting a little winded at this stage in the game with a lot to play for and a lot ahead as these two teams have inched to their goals today. Join us later today on ESPN3 for more Ultimate College Championship action. This time we'll have the men's first semifinal for you live at 5.30 Eastern. Join us for more Ultimate right here on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. Callahan Award winner Jimmy Mickle and Mama Bird from Colorado up against Ego of Oregon. And last year's Callahan Award winner Dylan Freechild, and then a rematch of the Atlantic Coast Regional Final. North Carolina dark side, their rival to the East, UNC Wilmington. There's Bethany Kaler, one of the star players of Oregon, but unfortunately she broke her foot in practice, and she is unable to play here. It's tough because she's a Cincinnati girl, and from the moment they announced that Nationals would be just outside of Cincinnati, you know she had to be super excited, but she played on the Junior Worlds team. Really a, an all-American caliber player. Certainly it, it hurts Oregon not to have her. They'd certainly have a better chance of winning if she was active and available. After a deflection, the disc still handled by Jody Deering. And now Central Florida with their biggest lead today. Deering finds Alexa Wood. <laughs> Directing traffic near the end zone. Alexa Wood, super quick. She ran track in high school. Her coach, Joseph Tilly, calls her the fastest woman in women's ultimate. Taking a two-point lead, you know, Alexa Wood, 
Tilly told me she's a funny character. She's, she's just very modest. And sometimes Tilly thinks that she's not running her hardest because she's sort of afraid of embarrassing the other person for running too fast. Certainly a great personality to have an ultimate and a key player for Central Florida now and for years to come. She's just a sophomore, 20 years old. This is starting to remind me a little bit of the Central Florida men in the semifinals last year, Wayne, against Carlton. And Carlton just had a run of going to the semifinals every year. They were the team that had been there before. They were the established program, much like the Oregon women are right now. An offsides call, you get one offsides warning, and then it's a substantial penalty. So this is not that big of a deal. It's only a big deal if it happens again. Well, you know, UCF, just like the UCF men, up and coming, growing exponentially. Got some great coaching. You know, Joseph Tilly played in the early mid 90s at UCF. It's funny, I asked Joe Tilly why he started playing Ultimate, and he said he wanted to work on his man to man defense for flag football. <laughs> did it work? And uh, it did work, but eventually he started liking Ultimate more than flag football, as a lot of people who discover the sport realize. Played on some club teams in Orlando. Over the top, and that one knocked away. As Mariel Hammond has had several of those today, another try there. And UCF slides the disc right back to Oregon. Gives Oregon a chance to reset. The Huck. Harris versus Bovey. And it's Harris who wins. But a turnover on the next toss as Erin Godding tried to turn up field before she caught the disc. Big chance for Oregon to take advantage. The hammer from Darch, the point for Oregon. Well, big turnaround here. Godding just knows she made a key mistake. The senior captain gave it up. And then Sophie Darch dropping the hammer. One of the best hammers in the women's game. Ashley Young with the goal for Oregon. And we take a look at how we got to this point, back and forth. Sonny Harris, six assists. Bovey with three goals for Oregon. There have been six ties in this game. A couple of lead changes as well. And this one far from over. First to 15, next to advance. Winner plays Ohio State in the championship game tomorrow. We're still more than 20 minutes away from the soft cap. This game has had a nice pace to it. The soft cap goes on after an hour and 25 minutes of play. After the point concludes, you add two to the highest team score, and that's your eventual total. So for example, if, if nobody scored for the next 20 minutes and the soft cap went off, I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. And if Oregon ties it at 10, then we would be game to 12. But I think we'll still be game to 15. Another turnover deep in their own zone, and Oregon takes advantage again. They've tied it. Andrea Fontenot with the goal, and it's 10-10. Harris just overshoots the intended target. Three sirens nearby, but nobody close enough. Oregon attacking quickly, and then Schaffner threading the needle to Fontenot. Seems like ever since UCF took the 10-8 lead, they've dropped some concentration. Well, just a couple bad throws is all it can take. 
UCF trying to get to the final for the first time, a program that's only been around since 2009. Oregon behind Jesse Schaffner and many others trying to return to their third straight championship game. They lost to Washington in 2012. They won the title last year. And they'd love a crack at Ohio State in the Buckeye State tomorrow. Oregon also the champs in 2010. You know, we talked about it during the first game, Wayne. The women's college title has basically only been won by West Coast or Pacific Northwest teams since 2002. I mean, it's been a dozen years of Stanford and UC Davis and UC San Diego and Santa Barbara and British Columbia and Washington and Oregon. Not since Georgia in 2001 did a national champion come from the East Coast, but if Central Florida were to upend the defending champs here, we'd have the Southeast against the team from Ohio. You see in that list of past champions, a lot of those past champions were here again this weekend. The Huck for the point, overthrown. Or perhaps in Aaron Godding's case, she got a little turned around at the goal line. But there is a foul call, and it looks like this one will come back. Correction, we have a stall It was a stall call. Contested stall. Contested stall. If it was an uncontested stall, it would have been Oregon's disc at the spot of the stall. Instead, it'll be Oregon's disc anyway, but they'll need to go the full field. How do you contest the stall? The, the marker, the one who's guarding the handler, is the one who's counting the stall. So how does the, the handler say, no, that's not right? Well, the offensive player, the thrower, can say, no, I got the throw off before you got off the T and 10, or it was a fast count. You didn't have a full second in between each count. They do Mississippi, how do they know when it's a full second? You know, <laughs> spirit of the game. They do it like Joey Crawford. Haley Walrus to pick up for few. Great leaping poach by Mariel Hammond. Mariel Hammond with the D once again for Siren. Harris with the backhand flick. And the easy point for Central Florida to retake the lead. Sonny Harris finds Aaron Godding in the end zone for the Siren score. And Central Florida. Well, this is going down to the wire. That was a tremendous leaping sky from Casey, uh, excuse me, from Mariel Hammond. And then again, the disc in Sonny's hands. Central Florida is in good hands when the disc is in her hands. And this is a, a lapse in transition defense from Oregon because Aaron Godding could not have been more wide open in the end zone. Well, here we go, coming down the stretch here. Oregon, you know, was tested in quarters today, but in the in pool play, you know, Oregon had a, had a reasonably tight game against Stanford. 15-13, I'd say reasonably tight. But other than that, 15-10 over Colorado College, 15-8, 15-5. It's been pretty easy for Fugue. And a turnover, now Central Florida with a chance to go up by two once again. Engstadt Lido, the freshman, turning that one over for Oregon. Bovey trying to stay close to Sonny Harris with the force. And a nice catch by Godding. Harris floats it back forward, and Central Florida gets the point. No, they didn't. They'll say it was out of bounds. Hammond was not in bounds, no point. 
Oregon gets it back at the goal line. We'll get the benefit of the second look. It was really close to the observer, though, right on top of it. Oregon pushing. Oregon's beating Central Florida's cup, but being patient. Earlier in the game, they would have just fired it deep earlier in the point. But Sonny Harris has been lurking in the shadows deep, deep. This time they were patient. Another swing across the field created more space in the end zone, forced Harris to pick the side. This is the Harris score at the other end. First point of contact on the line. Good call by the observer. You only need one foot, but the line is out. And Bovey to Schaffner. So back to even again, first to 15 is the winner. And that team will advance to the championship tomorrow to play Ohio State. Fever had a pretty easy time with Washington earlier, beating them 15 to 9, but quite a spirited affair here. The biggest lead was UCF's 10 8 lead. Now Oregon has scored three of the last four. All tied up at 11. We've seen many turnovers create opportunities for both sides. How important is keeping those turnovers to a minimum here in the final minutes? Well, the big thing is the unforced turnovers. You, know, you want to take the sure thing throw, and you can't have a drop here. You know, one drop could determine whether you're playing tomorrow or you're watching tomorrow. Godding fires it ahead. And Central Florida back on top. Amy Price with the goal. Aaron Goddick, what a flick. This could not have been any more perfect. Great balance, one fake, and then she just unleashes. And give the receiver credit too. Amy Price goes up and makes the play. You know, a little bit easier because there's no mark whatsoever there. Darch went for the D on the dump try and just a wide open look for Godding. That's a thing of beauty. That interception attempt by Darch, was that something that cost them? It turned out it did. You know, she probably doesn't get that clean look of a throw if Darch is there. Defense in large part is about calculated risk. Sometimes the guy who lays out over and over and over again is putting their team in a disservice because if you lay out and don't get it, then for that second that it takes you to recover, your team's playing a man down. Sophie Darch trying to set something up for Oregon, faking the hammer. Great defense, the pressure on from Jody Deering. And keep feeding Darch. She's the Callahan nominee. She's the leader of this offense. And now Darch goes for the huck. Into the wrong hand. Central Florida gets it right back. Very little disc movement in terms of swinging the disc and forcing the cup to run. Most teams play against that three-man cup with three handlers. For Oregon there, it was just Darch and Schaffner. And Hammond calls the final timeout for UCF. In this close game, Evan, no timeouts left for the Sirens. Do you think they should have kept one? Yeah. I think this could be the, the, the game, the point that takes them to the final. So if they break here, it's huge. But you know, this is basically a prayer from Dart. Yeah, it looked like her target was open, but Harris again lurking. 
you know, most teams combat that zone defense with a third handler to be able to spread the field and force the cup to run. You, know, you, you gotta make the zone defense pay. Oregon trying to fire each other up, but we just saw Joe Tilly calm, calculated in the UCF huddle. There's Lou Burris. His team on the brink, and Joe Tilly gives a fist pound to Aaron Godding. A great turnout for this semifinal matchup, this tournament here in suburban Cincinnati. A great game between these two. As the winner goes on to play Ohio State in the national championship game tomorrow. Men's semifinals still coming up tonight. And UCF looking for a two-goal lead. They won't get it. Amy Price couldn't catch it. Wow. That's deflating because that was a perfect throw. A little wobbly with the win, but Amy Price has to make that catch. They set up the zone defense again, and they throw the four-man cup near the goal line. Darch needs some help. She needs a dump. She needs a swing. Darch instead forces it, finds Bovey, but it's intercepted again. You can't count on those downfield shots with Harris in the area. Quick giveaway, and this is where Oregon lives. And Darch on the huck attempt to tie it. Oregon fortunate. What a game this has been. That was the defensive play. Getting in the lane, Alex Odie. And then Dart just floats it to space. She has really nice touch on her throws. A byproduct of her having played the sport for so long and having spent so much time just refining the release point, the wrist snap. Now, I love trying to get new people to throw a Frisbee and the most common Retort is, oh, I can't throw a Frisbee. Yes, you can. It just takes practice. You practice as much as Sophie Darch, and you'll be able to throw the disc pretty well. Maybe not as well as her, but it just takes practice, hours, and it's fun. Our ninth tie of this game. Central Florida on the sideline trying to work up their team. A chance for the Sirens to even things up. For Central Florida in this game, they've executed their short game very well. Oregon's gone back and forth between short scores and long scores. What do those numbers tell you, Evan? Well, Central Florida has been efficient in the end zone. And Oregon has taken a lot of deep shots. Sort of an ill-advised throw by Harris. Fortunately for her, Schaffner jumped the gun and is called for a foul. UCF catching a break on what could have been a demoralizing turnover. As we get down to the business end of this game, Evan, what are some things that these two teams are trying to look for to gain an edge? It's all about hard man defense. And was a foul called? Schaffner looks like she's pleading for the D. The observer in to make a final call here as Schaffner pleads her case with Mariel Hammond. All right, so do you want me to rule on this or you want to send it back? Certainly some contact there. Well, but no foul, and Oregon will get the disc. Once everyone's ready, That's have the nearest defender. There certainly was contact. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there was a foul. Oregon trying for the quick strike. And the layout attempt, Schaffner comes up empty, and hopefully she's OK. We have an injury in the end zone. Jesse Schaffner has been so involved. Ouch. 
A hard landing there, and that might have been what caused the injury. Schaffner's been playing for a long time. Jesse and Sophie Darsh played high school ultimate against one another. Jesse Schaffner for the University School of Nashville, Tennessee. Sophie Darch for Paideia in Atlanta. Schaffner being tended to here as you see on the sidelines, we talk about the spirit of the game. The two teams stand against one another on the sidelines while playing each other on the field. There's no shortage of friendship between the two squads and really just the fact that you play this game really gives you something of a commonality with your opponent. A huge part of ultimate is the sideline banter and cheers and just the action on the sidelines. And again, speaking from personal experience, when you have loud, lively sidelines, it, it makes a tremendous difference when you're on the field to, to know that you have that support. It just gives you the fuel you need to keep going late in a tournament, late on a Sunday when everything's on the line. How about Sophie Darch? right there next to her teammate Schaffner. Spirit As of the game, the rules governing ultimate. Spirit of sportsmanship, the responsibility for fair play on the player, and it's not win at all costs. You, you compete as hard as you can, but never at the expense of the mutual respect among competitors. And you watch the game at the highest level you watch Worlds coming up in Italy this August, you will see outrageous athleticism and yet still great spirit and appreciation. Hope Schaffner's okay, but she looks like she's in some pain. She landed right on her right hip and as she tried to get up, the pain became too much to bear. She's back down, and you see the cart that's going to take Schaffner off the field. As Schaffner's injury gets tended to here, the time continues to drain. And with about two and a half minutes before the soft cap, Evan, this becomes a game that could go to 14 all of a sudden. Well, the, the soft cap would go on after this point concludes, even if it went off during the point. So it would be game to 15. The right hip, the upper thigh. And it looked like she was going to pop up and then felt it. You know, the ramifications of this injury are massive and multifold. You know, it's 12 to 12 with a spot in the finals on the line. And yet, you know, Jesse Schaffner is one of the three or four most valuable players for Oregon without a doubt. I mean, statistically, she's right at the top of the pack. They did just they did just stop the clock because of the injury. Still a tie here, 12-12. There's about two minutes until that soft cap, and as Evan mentioned, that soft cap goes into effect after the next point. So, still, this game goes to 15. And UCF and Oregon playing for a chance to move to the final. Now, there is also such a thing as a hard cap. 20 minutes after the soft cap, if the game is still going on, the hard cap goes off. You finish the point you're playing. The game is over unless it is tied, in which point you would play one more. So if that hard cap point ties the game, then you play for the next point and they did add to some grab a winner. They added some time to the soft cap as well. They put four minutes on the clock, dating back to the time of the injury. Is that customary or is that special for the tournament? You no, know, usually don't play with a scoreboard, so it's usually hard to tell. Usually <laughs> the whole tournament is going, you know, eight games at a time. And the, the soft cap is basically a mechanism to keep a tournament moving so you can have a schedule in round one is 8.30 to 10.15. And then round two starts at 10.30 and goes to 12.15. A little bit more flexibility in the semis. The men's final about one hour and 25 minutes away from the opening pull. 
That's going to be an epic game. Oregon. See the Oregon players there cheering on Jesse Schaffner as they try to make sure she's okay and get her the medical attention that she needs. They stand her back up here, and it looks like Schaffner at least feeling better than a few minutes ago the first time they tried to pull her up. She grabbed at her right hip in agony and fell back to the ground. The Nashville native, the junior Jesse Schaffner, and she's certainly been active in this game. As few players look on, yeah, and Schaffner actually able to shy away from the cart and walk off mostly on her own power. Yikes. Tough as nails and Lou Burris there to hold her hand through it. That was a really powerful visual. Lou holding her hand. You know, who knows whether or not she might be okay to play tomorrow. But the next 15, 20 minutes, Wayne, or what's going to decide this one? And, and this is this is a pivotal point for both of these programs. Oregon had just another amazing season overall. And now back to action after a long delay for Schaffner's injury, Central Florida. Working it forward, Mariel Hammond tosses it across. It's Kayla St. Pierre, described as one of the hardest workers on the team. Now Brock. Dump it back to Hammond. It's Hammond and Harris that have made this UCF offense go today. And now Sonny Harris throws it short, looking for Godding near the goal line, and Oregon with a chance to grab the lead. Oregon down 10-8 at one point in this second half. They've made a nice run. And Fugue trying to get back into the title game for the third straight year. Oregon's, Oregon's last lead, 6-5. That was in the first half. Oregon's offense is going nowhere against the UCF zone right now. That was basically a punt and play defense. Not something you want to do at 12-12 in the semis. Now Sonny Harris gives UCF the lead again. Aaron Godding makes the catch. Another goal for Godding. And the Sirens, two points from the championship. Darch had no dump, she had no swing. She just had to huck it up and hope. Harris slowly diminishing Fugue's hope. A few handler cuts. And then Godding. Wide open. Now, Joe Tilly deserves a ton of credit for the game plan he's orchestrated and the job he's done all season long coaching the Central Florida team. You know, to jump from your first ever trip to Nationals where you finish 17th to being two points away from the championship game. I mean, this is a meteoric rise for this program, which has sort of been a sleeping giant. We saw it with the men under Andrew Roca rising to the finals a year ago, and now the women two points away. Oregon with a chance to tie it once again. Nine ties in this game. And a huck attempt to do it. Bovey tips it, and it was just out of the reach of Engstad Leto. But right back to Oregon. Sophie Darch with the interception. 
And now into the hands of Darch for Oregon to try to tie this game. A bump there, but no call as Darch finds it once again. Back and forth to Darch as Fugue tries to tie. Well, now there's some more downfield movement from the Oregon Cutters. Sophie Darch has some help behind the disc. Darch and Ashley Young able to play catch. Good patience there. That would have been a force, just like that was. A throw out of bounds gives UCF the opportunity to take a two-goal lead and really pin Oregon against the wall. The soft cap horn just blew. And Evan, all that really means that there's still another 20 minutes to the hard cap. Hammond with a miscommunication there. It's a killer mistake. Oregon needs to capitalize here. And, and they, they do. do, they tie it at 13. Ashley Young has emerged in this second half. The senior has two goals. This is just a quick counter. The freshman Walrus picks up, hits Darch, and nice and easy to Young. Something to note, Jesse Schaffner is up off the bench, and she's heading toward the line. And it looks like she wants to play this next point at 13s. That's hard to believe. Schaffner was down for several minutes. And it took a couple of attempts to get her off the ground. Seemed to be in serious pain. And if she comes back onto the field here, that would be unbelievably impressive. She's running along the sideline up near the end zone, trying to feel it out to see if she can come back in. Not in the field this point, but I seems don't know. to be moving okay. She just tossed her towel and now trying to stretch it out a little bit, make sure the hips and the thighs are working the right way. The sound of the sirens on the sideline for Central Florida. Soft cap is on. This game will end at 15. And who will it be with a berth to the final on the line? Ohio State awaits the winner. How much pressure are they feeling down in the field right now? It depends. You know, Oregon's been here before, but that doesn't mean you don't get nervous. Central Florida has been impervious to the nerves this weekend. Great effort after a tangle, and Hammond able to come up with the disc. You know, Oregon missing Kaler, missing Schaffner. Played a 15-13 game in the quarters. UCF basically at full strength, even though they're not as deep, just trouncing Michigan in the quarters. The extra miles on the legs this weekend could be a factor right now. Trying to set up in the red zone. Hammond has a target, overthrows. And now Oregon with a chance to take the lead. A little too much float, but it's hard to give the thrower a, a hard time for that. It, it caught an unlucky patch of wind. A little breeze. Sophie Dark will take a timeout for Oregon. Fugue still has one left. Sirens out of timeouts. What a game this has been. The winner of this one moves on to the final. And you can join us for the USA Ultimate College Women's Championship game. Memorial Day tomorrow at noon Eastern, right here on ESPN3, your home for the 2014 USA Ultimate College Championships fever against the winner of this one. Turned into a pretty hot day here in suburban Cincinnati. Fans baking under the sun. Second game of the day for both teams. How much does fatigue 
play a factor here? Uh, it's absolutely a factor. You know, the third day of the weekend. Most tournaments last just two days. With that said, these athletes are conditioned. They've been training all season for this. Now, if Oregon takes its time here and works it flow smoothly down the field, I think Oregon has the players to convert. Instead, they go over the top. Dangerous throw, but it connects to Alex Odie. Sophie Darch loves that hammer. We saw this quick pace offense work for Oregon earlier, but not this time, and only because Darch, of all people, dropping an easy pass. First team to 15 wins. Central Florida moving ahead. The dump to Hammond. Now Sonny Harris finding Brock. Brock on the side force, able to get rid of it. Hammond again. Now Brock looking for the lead, and it's dropped. A crucial drop, and now Dark lets one fly, and that'll soar over everybody. Before that drop, Wayne, the key to that defensive possession was Ashley Young's handler defense on Sonny Harris. She did a tremendous job standing on the balls of her feet, did not allow UCF to get the reset. But that still should have been caught. There have been key drops on both sides, and really, more than anything, mistakes have led to this tie. There's one from Central Florida. Harris throwing into traffic, but it looks like UCF will catch the break here as Brock got run down by Walrus. This is a huge decision from the observer. Either Oregon's disc on the goal line or UCF will preserve possession. Observer's decree here. The foul called against Oregon. It is a foul. UCF keeps the disc. Shayna Brock will resume the possession for Central Florida. Hammond leaves it off for Harris. She might take a shot here. Just a mid-level pass instead. UCF almost lost it. Hammond hangs on. Brock a part of the rotation on this possession. Back and forth between her, Hammond, and Harris. It's Hammond again. UCF trying to hold patience, trying to take the lead. A bad throw on the dump. And now Walrus goes for the point. Oregon takes the lead. Second goal today for Andrea Fontenot. One too many mistakes from UCF. So many chances on this point. You can't give the champs that many chances. What a throw from Walrus. A daring flick. It was perfect. Central Florida has had so many opportunities and now the Sirens will need back-to-back -back scores. It's the first of 15, sending one of these two teams to the finals tomorrow against Ohio State. And Central Florida about to get possession here, which a point from them would essentially send this game into what's considered overtime. It also give UCF a timeout back if they do get a point and make this an overtime game. 10 ties, three lead changes. And on this one, it's Oregon who reclaims possession of the lead for the first time since they were ahead six to five.
Oregon will pull it. And UCF will try to score it. Central Florida has had some miscommunications. They've made some mistakes. And now, Evan, they've got to try to shake those away. Familiar faces on the line for this must-score point for UCF. Darch getting ready to pull for Oregon. We saw Jesse Schaffner running around, but she is not on the field here. Darch on the pull. And now a crucial possession begins for Central Florida. Down one, facing game point. Sirens can't afford to turn it over, especially on their own end. Godding flicks it back to Sonny Harris. Harris has been quiet in the second half after six assists in the first half. They're trying to work it back into Sonny Harris' hands. She's handled more assists than anybody in this tournament. Brock in trouble. Things getting pretty congested on the sideline. UCF could use a swing. And a foul was called before that throw. Foul called just before the throw. Hammond stating her case. Getting a little testy down there. between Hammond and Alex Odie. Big point here if Central Florida can get it. If not, it's game point for few. This might be a turnover. I think Oregon's got a case. When a pick's called and they throw it anyway, you still got to complete it. Otherwise, it's a turnover. A little bit different here with a foul. UCF able to keep the disc. And Sonny Harris handling it again to Hammond. Hammond flips it forward into traffic, but a catch made by Price. Now Hammond for the point. Central Florida is even. Tremendous bid from Bovey, but she came up just short. Double game point coming up. Hammond, nice job using the body to shield the disc. And a perfect floaty backhand. And it has all come down to this. Hard to believe that you can start training in the summer, go to tournaments in the fall, track workouts, gym workouts, drills, scrimmages, tournaments. You're in the semifinals and nationals, and your season comes down to one point. They call this double game point. They call it universe point. And Central Florida will get a timeout. Oregon will not be given another timeout. They just get. One timeout per team in overtime. And at 14 apiece, it is overtime. You see the line for Oregon, including Bovey, Darch, Young, Odie, Walrus. And now Central Florida on the pull. A trip to the finals on the line on this next point. And it's Oregon with possession to start it. That one nearly poached. Darch so good with the disc. Now Odie. Darch on the hammer toss. Oregon pushing. Looking for their third straight trip to the championship game. Some traffic, but Walrus now slows it down, and we're going to have a stoppage. And a foul, it looks like, being contested. <laughs> Goes back to Ashley Young, and Oregon will resume possession from there. 
needing a point to advance to the finals for the third year in a row. The defending champions. Young slipped it ahead. Nice Walrus catch from behind. That was something else by Haley Walrus. The throw is behind her with her offhand, her left paw, potentially saving the season for Fugue. And now about 20 yards from victory. Walrus sleeves it too far. Central Florida gets it. And a chance for the upset. Sonny Harris to start the possession for the Sirens. On Universe Point, it's UCF with their first chance to win. Harris flicks it forward, gets it back. Harris on the hook! And just off the fingertips of Amy Price. Back to Oregon. Odie flings it forward. A chance here for Darch. Game point two for Fugue. One throw could do it. Odie looks for it. Oregon returns to the championship game. One of the greatest games we've ever seen here at Nationals. To finish it up, Alex Odie by Sophie Darch in the end. Odie to Darch to finish it for Fugue. And Oregon stays alive. Heartbreak for Central Florida. The stated goal of a national championship. And Sirens will fall just short of that. But I guarantee you, Central Florida has earned Oregon's respect and earned everybody's respect. This close to being 10 yards away and just out of the reach of Amy Price. And then Walrus, the freshman, to Darch. The Callahan nominee over to Odie. Up the field. You can tell all the defenders are tired. A few turns on this universe point, but Darch, Bartriff, and then Odie, right to the Paideia alum, Sophie Darch. One of the faces in the women's game and her team is headed back to Memorial Day Monday here at College Nationals. Our Discraft play of the game. The final toss of the day as Oregon marched it upfield. Sophie Darch helping set up the offense. And on the other end of this toss from Darch, she started to make her way to the end zone. And Alex Odie able to find her for the win. Fifteen, fourteen in overtime. Oregon to the finals for the third year in a row. They'll play Ohio State for the national championship tomorrow. The USA Ultimate College Championships have been presented by the Discraft Ultra Star. Official disc of USA Ultimate. Ask your retailer for Discraft Ultra Star. The Triple Crown Tour, America's most competitive and prestigious series of ultimate tournaments. The U.S. Open Ultimate Championships and Convention, a gathering of the international ultimate community to celebrate character, community, and competition this July 4th weekend in the Twin Cities. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of ultimate in the United States. To learn more about ultimate or find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. 
Oregon 15-14 winners over Central Florida in overtime, and now Fugue moves on to the final game. They'll play for their second straight national championship tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN3 as they go up against Ohio State. Fever winning today. They beat Washington 15-9. We are about to be joined by Oregon head coach Lou Burris after an incredible game, a great win for Fugue and coach. Ever a doubt there at the end? Uh, of course. <laughs> it was pretty touch and go. Uh, somewhere around uh, 12s or 13s, I, I just realized how much fun I was having, and from there I didn't stress out too much. Coach, it was a really powerful moment with you holding Jesse Schaffner's hand walking off the field. How is she doing? Um, you know, she's able to kind of jog, but didn't able to play it. I, I have no idea. Uh, we'll have to wait and see for tomorrow. And now tomorrow, Ohio State, how do you prepare for that? You know, I think we're just going to kind of go into our own little team bubble and ride this wave of emotion and just go out and play and not think very much. Coach, Sophie Darch catches that upline score to finish the game. The disc ran through her hands. She used her as a deep threat, which I haven't seen as much. How important of a factor was she for your team, and what does she mean to your program? Well, I mean, she's, she's the central throwing cog of our offense, and most of what we do flows through her there. And... And that's, that's the big part offensively that she does. And then defensively, she came and she played, I think, probably the last 10 or 11 points in a row and did a really fine job there, too. Coach, congratulations. We'll see you out here tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Lou Burris, the head coach of Fugue, as Oregon returns to the championship game for the third consecutive season. A chance to win it for the second straight year as they beat Central Florida today in overtime, 15-14. And Evan, tomorrow... Oregon, Ohio State, how do you see that shaping up? It's going to be a great game. You know, they met uh, at the Northwest Challenge, and Oregon was the consensus number one team in the country, and Ohio State showed up on their turf and really took it to Oregon. So I know o Ohio State knows it can win. Oregon knows it can win. It's going to be one heck of a battle. That's Evan Lepler. I'm Wayne Randazzo saying so long from Mason High School in Mason, Ohio. The final score, Oregon wins in overtime, 15-14 over Central Florida. To watch this entire game on replay, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN.